Hi guys, this is Norgar. Welcome back to tutorial how to set up a car in iRacing. This is video number two, the overview. Uh, in this video we're going to be going over everything that you can change in iRacing on the Class A Cup car uh, and going over all the different variations of uh, what everything is. Before you can start changing anything on your vehicles you need to know what it is and uh, why it's there and why you can change it. So uh, we're going to just do a general overview of what you can change. So let's get into it. Heading down to Richmond. We're at Richmond International Raceway here during the day and uh, we're with the uh, Chevy Impala Norgar TV uh, 2012 Cup car. Um, so let's get right to it. Let's hit over to let's head over to the garage and uh, we've touched on this briefly last time but we'll go over it again real quick uh, the first thing if you're brand new uh, to setting up a car and you have like no idea what you're doing what you want to do is you want to go to the iRacing setups and you want to find the uh, fix setup uh, that iRacing provides you and what you do to do that is you go over to the iRacing setups click on that and then uh, a bunch of the fix setups come up and we're at uh, Richmond and we're gonna scroll down until we see uh, Richmond uh, fixed and hit that and load that setup up and once you have that setup loaded uh, there's three pages under the garage section and it's uh, the first one that comes up is tires and how you change these is down here in at the bottom of the page uh, there's three little tabs one says tires one says chassis one says notes uh, and we'll hit all these. So the first one is tires. Uh, as everybody knows, car has four tires, so you're going to have four different readings. Now, iRacing only lets you change the cold pressure, and that's it. Uh, they don't let you do anything else to the tires, um, so there's not a lot to worry about here, but we're going to go over it. Uh, right now, cold pressure is currently set at 30, uh, 30 psi, so that's uh, 30 pounds of pressure per square inch. Um, and the uh, definition of cold pressure says, now this is nice, I, and before we start going through all this, so I only have to say it once, is uh, if you hover over anything now, and it didn't used to be this way in racing, but it is now and it's nice, if you hover over anything it will give you the definition uh, on what it's for. So if you forget anything I tell you, just head on into the garage and uh, you know, just hover over what your question is and it'll tell you. So anyway, up here, the cold pressure. Uh, and iRacing's definition is air pressure in a tire as measured when the tire is cold, meaning room temperature, meaning sitting there, meaning not moving, meaning just off the truck. Uh, the more heat buildup, the better grip at lower loads, left sides, or road courses, or the higher pressure, the less heat, better grip at higher loads, or right sides. So basically all you need to know for now, <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll get into tire uh, pressure and changing it a whole bunch later, but all you need to know right now is that you can change that and shorter tracks you're going uh, you're going to have a lower pressure bigger tracks you're gonna have a higher pressure keep it simple keep it easy leave it at that right for right now so let's move on to uh, the next reading now these uh, these are readings these are not things you can change but I'm gonna explain them to you and what they mean uh, the last hot pressure if you hover over that it says the air pressure reading when the car has last stopped in the pit stall or when the driver got out meaning he pressed escape. He stopped the uh, he stopped the car out on the track and you press escape. Uh, it takes a reading and you can come to the garage and find out what that reading is. Now, uh, right now you see my hot pressure right here uh, says 34.5, but my cold pressure was 30 degrees. Or yeah, 30 degrees. It was, uh, it was 30 PSI. The reason for that is, is I did a 10 lap run. And in 10 laps, <clears throat> excuse me, my left front raised 4.5 pounds in the left front in 10 laps. 
Um, and that's going to happen. Uh, you, uh, anytime the cold pressure is always going to be lower than the hot pressure. Uh, now here's some of the, uh, the varying degrees of what, what will happen out on the track as you run with your tires. Um, when you run out it, and like I said, I ran a 10 lap run and it raised four and a half pounds. Now say on a 20 lap run, it, it raises five pounds. But during those 20 laps, uh, once you get under caution flag conditions, your tire pressure is going to go back, uh, go back down. Uh, it's losing heat because you're not running as fast. There's not a, there is not as much friction and you're not turning near as hard at the speeds that create such friction and friction creates heat. So know that under uh, green flag conditions, and there will be a point where your tires will top off. They'll stop gaining pressure after uh, so much abuse and wear. Uh, they, it's not like that those 30 pounds, if I run 300 laps uh, under green flag conditions, um, that my tire pressure is going to go up to 100 PSI. That's not the case. Um, it will. It does have a cap. It will stop at some point and there's just that's just what the tires constructed for and this is how iRacing had to uh, had to acquire this in their simulator so there is a cap at some point and uh, but you don't really need to worry about it because uh, right now all you need to worry about is the cold pressure and where you can change it uh, the next line says last temps and then it says OMI and then it gives you three readings Okay, and what this means is outside the O means outside, the M means middle, and the I means inside. On the left front tire, which is the one we're discussing right now, now all this is going to translate over to every other tire. Uh, none of these readings are going to be any different or uh, you know uh, looked at any differently than what we're doing here on the left. So we're not going to do this four times. We're just going to do it once. But outside, middle, and inside. Imagine your tire, you're standing behind it. It's on the, uh, it's on the ground. The uh, lug nuts are facing to your left, and this, this is going to represent your left front tire. The outside of the tire is going to be the, the side that is facing toward the infield uh, on an oval track. <clears throat> the middle, obviously, is in the middle, and the inside is going to be the uh, one facing toward uh, well, obviously the inside of the car. So, and on the on the right front, it's going to be the exact opposite. The inside is going to be uh, the one that's facing inside the car. The middle is going to be in the middle. The outside is going to be the outside of the part of the tire is going to be the one facing closest to the outside wall. Okay. So, on this line, they give you, um, and again, this is taken either when you last pit or hit escape. Uh, it's taking your last reading and the last temp, it'll say 171, 172, and then it says 130. Those are, <clears throat> that's just important information for you uh, to see how much heat is going where, okay? And we'll get into how to interpret that information later on. Last line on the tire section is tread remaining. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it breaks it down in all three sections of the tire. This way you can see which part of the tire is getting used the most. Uh, the left front says 98%. That's on the outside. On the middle it says 98%. And on the inside of the tire it says 100%. Which means after those 10 laps, if this is at 100% on the inside of my left front tire, I have not worn anything down. Nothing yet. So. That again, we're not going to get into changing what for what reason yet, but just you know, it's that's important information to see. If we drop back to the left rear, it's 99 across the board. If we go to the right rear, it's 98 on the inside, it's 97 in the middle, and 97 closest to the wall. So uh, I've used up three percent uh, there on the outside of the right rear. So that's basically tires for right now. Um, just a general rule of thumb. If you're going to start uh, and not wait for the rest of the information and start trying to tweak on your cars and you're going to tweak tires, uh, the easiest way that I can tell you and, and what to do is on shorter tracks, lower tire pressure, bigger tracks, more. 
Now, you don't want it too low and you don't want it too high. Uh, you definitely don't want to go to the full extremes on it because either way, one way or another, if, you, if your tire pressure is entirely too low, you're going to spin around. If your tire pressure is entirely too high, you're going to spin around. Okay, and uh, it's going to be an uh, undrivable car is what's going to happen. So again, when you're making uh, when you're making adjustments on your car, small, small increments. Do it two or three pounds. Go out and run five laps. And if that doesn't seem anything, do do you know three more pounds and three more pounds, and go out and run five laps, five laps, five laps, and see how it feels. And, and do that. So that's all the information that we're going to cover this time on tires. Uh, so we're going to head on and move over to the chassis next. All right, so on to the chassis. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click the chassis button. Now, you may look at this and say, oh my gosh, look at all that that's going on. Oh, you're going to be, it looks overwhelming. And uh, setting up a car, this is what I can say about setting up a car. Setting up a car, it's a geometry and a physics problem. Um, it's, it's difficult. It could take you weeks to get the car to drive exactly how you want it. But here's the bottom line. With any car setup, the longer you drive, like say, you know, if you're just driving around and you do, you know, you have... 15 cautions in your race, you don't even need a setup. Um, but if you're going to, you know, you get into iRacing, you've made it to the B and the A level, and you start moving your cars around, and, and you start, you know, fixing your cars up the way you like them, longer runs, your car will never stay the same. It, it, longer on into the run, it's going to change. And here's why is it, it's going to change is because two things are happening. One, you're shredding your tires, which we just talked about earlier with the tire wear. If we fall back here to the tires, as the tires are going to wear out. You're going to need tires. That's going to affect your speed. And it's also going to affect your handling. The other thing is, is you're burning off fuel. Uh, gasoline in your gas tank weighs a lot. It's, uh, it's, it weighs a lot. Uh, uh, one gallon of gas, uh, I believe, is eight pounds. So every time you burn a gallon of fuel, that's eight pounds. And that's going to mess with the weight distribution of your car. So it's going to be constantly changing as you're driving. So you're trying to find, when you're setting up a vehicle, you're trying to find a happy medium through the longest run that you could possibly go. You, you know, if we're going to go on a 50 lap run, um, you know, find if. 38 of those laps out of those 50 are under green, you know, you got to be prepared for things like that. So anyway, we are in the chassis section now in the garage and we're going to start uh, up here with the front. Now iRacing breaks it down into front and front uh, anti-roll bar and then it breaks it down in the left front wheel, which they're talking about the left front wheel, the right front wheel, the, the left rear and the right rear. And their last thing that you're going to be able to be changing around is the actual rear. So um, there uh, is two, four, six, seven different sections underneath the chassis part that you're going to be able to mess with. All right, so let's get started. The very first one is ballast forward. And what ballast forward is, is moving weight ballast forward or back affects the nose weight. The more forward the weight, the tighter the car gets. So if we take a look, and if you can, if you guys can just visualize this, uh, let's find a good camera angle here. Uh, if you take a look right there uh, at the number 30, and look at the blue stripe on the front underneath the Impala, the the further closer to the front of the car the weight is, the uh, tighter it's going to be. The further back toward the wheels, the looser it's going to be. Again, every adjustment you're going to make one way or another is going to affect the car. And a lot of the adjustments are going to affect them a little tiny bit. And a lot of the adjustments are going to affect them a medium a bit. And some of the other adjustments are going to affect them a lot. But for right now, what you need to know is imagine a weight right underneath the uh, number N, a big square weight. 
and you're moving that square weight forward or backward. That's the simplest way I can put it to you. Uh, so back toward the wheels, the looser it is, uh, further up toward the blue, uh, the blue little line there at the bottom of the car that goes around the front, which is your splitter, your front splitter, uh, the uh, tighter it's going to be. So that's that uh, on uh, ballast forward. Uh, now you can't, now the next one is nose weight and cross weight. Now you can't change these, but again, these are important pieces of information when you are making uh, adjustments to your car to keep an eye on. And nose weight is the percent of weight on the, sorry, the percent of vehicle weight on the front tires. Generally, more nose weight equals a tighter race car. Uh, and that's kind of what we just went over with the ballast forward. So if you change the ballast forward, now you can't go below zero on the ballast forward. Zero is it. But you can uh, raise it up, and this is actually moving it forward. As you see me click this, I'm at 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, and I'm making the car tighter right now. Tighter, 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 and it goes all the way up to, I don't know. Wow, it goes up real far. It goes up to 48. I go ahead and hit apply. Now the nose weight percentage has changed from 52 and a half to 55 because I moved the weight forward. Now if I tried to get in the car, I probably couldn't drive it because that was an extreme change. Okay, this is what I told you guys not to do, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes just so you can see the nose weight change. Uh, we'll go back down to zero and hit apply all right and that also changes the cross weight as well and the definition of cross weight is the percent of the vehicle on the left rear and right front the more cross weight now imagine like you know make an X make an X from the right front to the left rear the left front to the right rear and the one from the left to the right just erase it so it's there's a line from the right front to the left rear <coughs> And that is the percent of vehicle weight on the left rear and right front tires. The more cross weight percentage, the more understeer in left hand turns. And what that means is, is the higher percentage that this cross weight is, the tighter it's going to be when you're turning around ovals. Okay. The more oversteer in right turns. Okay. So if we were taking the cup car out on a road track, uh, the higher percentage would be better for right hand turns. And then iRacing gives a, a recommendation here under cross weight. Fifty percent generally is for the best best for road courses. And that's because you're turning left and right. That is a generalization. I will disagree with that. Uh, only because uh, some road courses have more uh, right hand turns than left hand turns and vice versa. Uh, you have to, when you're setting up a car like the cup car uh, for a road course track, you have to take into consideration how many times are you turning left, how many times are you turning right, um, and this is where these pieces of information will come to play on uh, when you're setting up uh, your ballast forward, where you want to stick that weight. Okay, so that's those first three things there, right there. And they're in the front. So now we're going to head on down to tow in. Tow in, if you watch a lot of NASCAR, uh, you hear this term quite often. And the definition of tow in, it means the left and right wheels are steered toward each other. Negative tow in or tow out means the left and right wheels are stored away from each other, or steered away from each other. Stick to toe out, now here again Zy Racing suggestions, stick to toe out at the front. The less front toe out equals the less temperature buildup. The more front toe out, the better turn in and more straight line stability. So if I was at like say a two mile course right here, and right here you guys can see that my toe in is uh, set to negative sixteenths of an inch. If I was at a uh, bigger course, let's just throw say Daytona right now. The, the toe in, I wouldn't need it so bad right now. I would need more straightaway stability. Uh, and then I would put this up. So the more you're turning, 
on a track, okay, just as a general rule of thumb. The more you're turning on the track, the lower you want this number to be, okay? And when I say lower, I mean negative. So that's toe in and toe out. Um, and again, if you get confused or whatever, just come in, hover over the little toe in there and it'll tell you and you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember Norgar explaining that. So that's toe in and toe out. Steering ratio. We hit on this in the last video. We'll do it real quick. Uh, the steering ratio degrees of steering wheel rotation to give one degree of front wheel steer angle. The higher the ratio, the slower the response. The less twitchy and the harder to catch slides with with counter steering. So the higher this ratio, if you start to spin, the higher this is, the harder it's going to be to regain it. The lower the ratio is, uh, it'll be easier to regain it, but uh, it, it's going to limit the amount of degrees you can steer your wheel. I usually, in the fixed setups, fixed setups a good place to start uh, at this particular track here at Richmond. Uh, they offer 12 to 1 as, as the defa uh, default, but uh, that's fine. Uh, but again, that's pretty much driver preference, but uh, if you want to loosen it up, make it a higher number. If you want to tighten it up, make it a lower number. All right, so the next uh, one in this section is front brake bias. This is something you're not going to mess with a whole bunch. Um, front brake bias is the percent of braking force acting at the front wheels. The more front bias, the car is more stable under braking, but longer braking distances are needed. Too little front bias, uh, the car wants to spin under braking. So basically, what that's telling you is, is the higher you put this uh, number, um, the uh, yeah, the higher you put this number, uh, the longer you're gonna need to get the braking you want. The lower you put this number, it's kind of like if you sl if you're in your passenger vehicle and you slam on your brakes and your back end, you slam on them so hard, your back end starts to skid out. That's what's gonna happen here. It's the same thing. Uh, basically, this brake bias, uh, to generalize it and sum it up, and it's all front brake bias, they don't let you mess with the rear brakes in iRacing. So it's all front. Um, if you have too much brake in it and you hit the brake, it's going to, what happens is, is the caliper uh, goes against, the, or the caliper, it, it flows easier and the brake pad slams up against the rotor of the car. And uh, that's going to, you know, initiate a spin. So this is something that, you know, like on a super speedway, you, you don't need a lot of brake. I mean, if you're hitting the brakes, there's something, you know, if you're hitting the brakes hard on a super speedway, there's something wrong. And uh, it's not really an adjustment you need to make um, one way or another, but it's just an example. Uh, you could you could uh, lower that so it would you lower the brakes so you don't. There's no drag. It doesn't drag. So um, it's not an adjustment you're going to be messing a whole lot with unless you're at like a short track and you need to not like when you step on the brake you're not hitting it all that hard and spinning yourself around. So shorter tracks where you're using a lot of brake, you may mess with this. On the bigger speedways, not so much. So that's brakes. The next is tape configuration. Now tape configuration, if we head down to our car and find the right angle, angle uh, that's as close as we're going to get. Just underneath the Impala there, uh, is your front grill your front grill now when they talk about tape configuration this is where they're talking about it this is the part of the car where the tape is going it is going on the front grill uh, your crew members are going to get out there they're going to unroll some real sticky tape kind of like a, it's kind of like electrical tape and it goes over uh, the actual grill see the, the grill has holes in it and those holes are giving air to your radiator which is the uh, the lifeblood of your engine if your radiator overheats your engines gonna die um, but why you might ask well why do you put tape up there you know you don't want your engine to blow up you put tape up there because it blocks the air coming in and instead of it going in and hitting the engine and coming to a stop and creating resistance um, it's going to hit the tape and it's going to roll around the sides of your car. 
um, now on uh, when you're messing with your tape uh, the more tape you can put on your grill and get away with the better um, and this is my suggestion anytime you can raise the tape and get away with it without blowing up your engine it's better because it's it's keeping that wind resistance um, from hitting you and it's also giving you more downforce and downforce is the force that is keeping your uh, front end close to the racetrack it's the it's the air pushing down on basically your hood is the simplest way to put it it's air pushing down on your hood which is keeping uh, your car down on the track you want to keep it as close to the close to the track as you possibly can uh, number one for air resistance number two for better better handling um, your car will handle better if you have more downforce so and this is one of the adjustments that you can make for downforce is tape uh, here at a short track which we're here at uh, Richmond um, downforce and that resistance not so much of an issue um, and why is because we're not reaching maximum speeds for the horses that we have inside the engine of the car. Um, <clears throat> short tracks are more about acceleration. Bigger tracks like Daytona, Indianapolis, uh, Talladega, tracks like that, it's more about downforce. It's more about the least amount of uh, resistance you can get on your car, uh, the faster you're going to go. So that's what the tape configuration is for. Again, here's something you can play, and it only goes from, you know, it goes from minimum to full 10 or to 90%. Um, now, here's a, here's a little trick. At any track you want to run, run at, uh, when you go to qualify, even if you don't change anything else in your setup, when you go to qualify, go down to full. Cover that grill completely up. Who cares if you blow up your engine after two laps? You don't need it anymore. Um, but if you can't make it the amount of laps or whatever, you know, drop it down to 90. But again, this is only for qualifying. You want to cover that up as much as possible for qualifying. This is very important. Um, I tend to, for every qualifying uh, session I go to, I go on full. Uh, and I will leave it on full. Again, I don't care if my engine blows up after two laps. I got my hot lap in on lap number two. I'm good to go. Um, even, at De uh, even at Daytona and Talladega, you can run it full. Uh, you will blow up on like lap number three or four, uh, but you will get two good laps in with full tape. Now, if you want to make it lap three or four at Talladega or Daytona, I suggest leaving it at 90 so you can make those last two laps just in case you screwed up you know, a little bit or what. But uh, for here at uh, Richmond, I got it set to 30. And uh, whether it, Richmond's a short track, it's it's below a mile. Um, it doesn't matter whether I set that at 10% or, you know, uh, maybe even 40%. But after about that, you know, again, you're running, you're running in a lot of traffic at Richmond. There's a lot of dirty air and your air, you don't want to starve that radiator for air because it will just overheat and then blow up. So the default is 30. So that's where I left it. So that's the front section of uh, the iRacing uh, adjustments you can make. Now we're going to flip over here to the front uh, anti-roll bar. This is the next section we're going to go over. And the front anti-roll bar, let's get right into it. Uh, the anti-roll bar says it used to control the body roll while cornering. And what this is telling you is if you take a look at, uh, let's go back to the car again. If we look at the car and get a good shot here. Um, everything you see there, everything that's fiberglass, everything that's black, orange, and gray, and white and whatever uh, this is what it's referring to let's go back to the chassis um, you're gonna you're gonna mess around with these settings to control the actual body of the car the body of the car while you're driving it is actually shifting and these are the uh, these are the settings that you're going to use to control that so the first uh, setting you can use is diameter and it says the larger front anti-roll bar diameter equals a stiffer bar more understeer which means tight um, <clears throat> so if we want to make this bigger if we want to tighten up the car a little bit we're gonna 
well we're gonna crank down on some bolts and we're gonna go higher and right now it's at 2.563 say our car is really loose and we're gonna crank it up uh, well it looks like it only, only can crank it up two or three spots and it still passes so that would that would make it tighter and if we go down again the exact opposite it's gonna make it looser alright so you guys got diameter right there and basically what that is is the anti roll bar it's a bar and uh, the diameter you're just changing the diameter of that actual bar that's what that is alright so the arm symmetry is the next thing that you can change and you have a choice of uh, none minimum two three four five or max and uh, right now it's set on none uh, and the definition of that is the more arm symmetry asymmetry equals more chassis roll uh, the chassis rolls more left while cornering which can help hold down the front splitter which we talked about earlier that's the very bottom piece in the front of the car which can help hold down the front splitter and increase downforce which we went over at road courses uh, use none so this is uh, the fix setup is actually used and uh, they're using the f in this fix setup here at Richmond they're actually using none uh, which is what they tell you to use for uh, road courses now if I were setting up my car for uh, Richmond uh, I absolutely would be changing this to something else but for now to keep it general we're just gonna leave it where it's at um, so that's uh, arms arm asymmetry uh, the more you go up uh, it will help hold down the front splitter and increase the downforce so that is uh, that's that if you want to decrease downforce you go back down alright so the next one is chain or solid link chain or solid link and here's what we have to say about that uh, with the chain attachment the anti roll bar is effective only in left turns with a solid link which is uh, it's you you have a choice here if you click on this on the little drop down menu you have a, a choice of chain or solid okay so let's continue reading the uh, the definition here the anti roll bar is effective only in left turns with a solid link the ARB or anti roll bar is effective turning both ways using a chain on the ovals can slow responsiveness to to the right which can help slide recovery on road courses use solid link so again they have it set up for a road course and uh, not sure exactly why uh, but again if I were setting up my car for this oval here at uh, Richmond I would be going with the chain um, because with the chain effect, uh, uh, with the chain attached the anti roll bar is effective in only left turns I'm not turning right so I would definitely be switching this so that's that down on to the uh, the next one it's called link slack uh, you can rotate this up or down this is uh, going to be affecting the preload which we'll get to in a minute but the link uh, the link slack controls preload in the anti roll bar generally try to minimize preload after any suspension adjustment with the chain attachment the more slack uh, more slack increases delay before the bar can become effective in a left turn so basically uh, this this one's kinda confusing but uh, basically what I can tell you in a general sense is uh, right now what you would want to do uh, let's see controls per, yeah, in uh, general yeah blah, blah, blah. generally try to minimize the preload okay and the preload um, here in the next one let's just read that is the twisting force in an anti roll bar as installed <coughs> excuse me making any height adjustment can change this and it can be used to control cross weight those are two more things we're gonna get into later on while when we're actually setting up a vehicle but just know for right now that the preload um, goes along with the link slack and it's also gonna go al along with your ride height uh, your tire pressure and uh, your your springs 
which we haven't got to yet. But what iRacing is telling us here uh, for the link slack and the preload is that uh, you want to keep this as low as possible, the preload. Um, the link slack, the more slack increases the delay uh, before the bar becomes effective in the left turn left turn essentially that's what what it's saying is is if it's not adjusted right when you turn left uh, going into you know any turn at any track on an oval when you turn left it's going to it takes when you when you turn left on your wheel it takes time for your wheels to actually register that you turn left this is going to change that time that's what it means uh, and if you if you have too much time between the two it, you're gonna feel like you're not even steering the thing you're gonna feel like you're lagging is basically what's gonna happen so just for right now know that the link slack the preload um, that we're gonna talk about those later so anyway the last one is attached a quick way to unhook the anti-roll bar to allow for static suspension adjustments without bar twist confusing things. Increasing the link slack and unhook the ARB before making spring ride heights adjustments. Attach and reduce link slack when done. Um, basically what this definition is telling you to do is that if you're going to make any adjustments uh, at all in the parts that we're going to talk about here coming up uh, you want this turned off I'm not exactly sure why they added that but uh, maybe somebody who has more uh, race car knowledge could explain that to me uh, why they even included this um, for people trying to play a video game this is this is quite complex and only really valuable to the real world uh, we really didn't need it here but anyway We'll go over it at one more time. Uh, a quick way to unhook the anti-roll bar. So basically, if you check this box, or I'm sorry, if you uncheck this box, all of this right here goes away. Everything that you've made here, it's gone. And they're telling you to they're telling you to uncheck this when you make adjustments down here. Okay. And that's what the definition is, and that's what I'm getting out of the definition. And again, it's not very practical, um, but again, maybe somebody can uh, clue me and the viewers in a little more on that. Uh, but anyway, that's how it's set up as the fix set up, and we're going to leave it that way for now. Now, okay, guys, um, we're going to end the video right here, right now, and uh, next time we'll be uh, addressing left front, right front, left rear, right rear, and the rear end. Uh, on the next tutorial video. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and got some useful information out of it. And uh, this is Norgar signing off, and uh, I'll see you soon.